Hello again, and thanks for popping in. My name is Jask, and I'm here with another speed paint video. This one is for yet another original Dungeons & Dragons character of mine named Azansony Rosa. Or Zane, because that's far easier to pronounce. They are a genderqueer drow monk who is only just beginning their adventuring career. They're a bit on the young side as far as elves go, being only 112 years old. And to summarize what their goal is, their father went missing 20 years ago, so Zane wants to figure out what happened to them. But I will get into that after I explain the rest of their history. Zane grew up in the care of a pair of husbands, a dwarvish guildsmith named Giravant and a human adventurer named Vicade. While Giravant chose to stay local and continue his work for the guild that he was working for, Vicade would periodically leave home to go on short adventures with his longtime friends and party. It was on one of these adventures that Vic would discover Zane, who seemed to have been abandoned on the surface world. Zane themselves had no recollection of how they got there, who their parents were, or even what their name was. They were very young at the time, and obviously a young drow should not be on the surface by themselves, so this raised some red flags. Vic and his party tried to no avail to discover the young drow's origin, but between finding no information about them and with no locals willing to take in a dark elf at a young age, or a dark elf in general, Vic decided to take Zane back to his home with Giravant until a course of action was figured out. After an exceptional amount of failed investigation into this matter, the husbands opted to formally adopt Zane into their family. It was the two of them who gave the child the name Azansini. By the time Zane was brought into the Rosa family, the husbands had also adopted the orphaned half-elf daughter of one of Vic's party members who had died on one of their many adventures a few years before Zane showed up. Her name is Giravir, and she and Zane were very close throughout their childhood. They shared a lot of the same interests and would bounce their passions off of one another to keep interests going. They were particularly invested in martial arts. Whenever Vic came home from his months-long journeys, he spent a fair amount of time teaching his kids the basics of martial arts, having been a monk himself for many, many years. He never got into too many complicated lessons with them, though, and whenever he was gone, Giravir and Zane would make sure to practice everything he had taught them so they could be in tip-top shape when he returned home from his next adventure. Alas, there was one adventure that Vic did not return from. There was a period of nine months or so when nobody had heard from Vic or his party, which obviously sparked some worry. The Rosa family were starting to fear that they had all died, and needless to say, that was a pretty heavy unknown to carry around. Zane wasn't taking the possibility very well, and ended up getting into a fight with a group of their peers who had made a pass at Vic being dead because of his foolishness. The fight went very, very poorly, and ended up with Zane being knocked unconscious and into a coma for a few days. When they finally woke up, their memory was patchy, as is the result of blunt force trauma. They didn't remember the fight or the events that led up to it, they were missing some random memories from the last decade, and they couldn't remember their first year or two with the Rosas at all. They also had no memory of Vic leaving nine months previously, or that he was considered missing now. They did not take this news very well, obviously, and Zane ended up making a full recovery, or mostly a full recovery. They regained a few of their memories here and there, but most of them were still missing. And between the missing memories and how little Vic had been at home in the previous years, Zane had very little left of their father to remember. The possibility of never seeing him again and never having the chance to make up for those lost memories really twisted the emotional knife, so to speak. Even in their adulthood, the topic of missing memories and the mystery of Vic is still a very sensitive subject to them. Eventually, with no change in the news and no word from the party, Vicade, Rosa, and his friends were presumed dead. 
Garavant would do his best in the remaining years to raise his kids through their sorrows, and at one point he tried to fill the empty space by sharing his craft with them. The lessons never really stuck with Zane outside of the basics of smithing and very bare-bones metalworking, but they did choose to pursue formal martial arts training in Vic's absence. Even though they had very little recollection of their father, Zane still remembered every form and lesson he had taught them growing up. To Zane, continuing to train was a way to honor his memory, and it served as a motivator toward their goal. Now in adulthood, Zane is ready to set their plans in motion. They're trained up and they've got their skills all nice and honed, and they're in the final throes of preparation. At the moment, they don't have an explicit plan other than get on the road, but after they meet their party and have a chance to look into some stuff, I'm sure they'll find a heading. And even though it's been years and the lack of memories is very, very sensitive, it only deepens Zane's desire to find their father, or at least what happened to him. Zane doesn't expect the search to be easy, but they're determined nonetheless. I'll probably end up drawing them in more dynamic environments once they have some notable experiences, but for now, since their adventure has just started and I don't have anything else to draw, this is fine. As far as Azansini's appearance goes, I admit it was a little challenging. The overall feeling stayed very close to my first idea, which was very literally, what if I had a drow with round pink glasses? From there, I just sort of let my imagination generate a couple more traits to go with it, and I built some structure from the little things. I had round pink glasses, laced up shirt, bare shoulders, and flowy lower half. Luckily, I was able to keep all of these preliminary concepts in the final design. I did have a lot of trouble with color, however. I've been trying to keep my palette simple in the last few designs, because sometimes less is more. But with Zane here, the plain black and rose-colored accents were too monotonous in the end. It was all too dark and it was difficult to see the character details with the lack of contrast. But I didn't want to abandon the black because I liked that a lot. Black and pink is one of my favorite aesthetics, so I didn't really want to just toss that whole idea out the window. So in the end, I ended up going back after laying on all of this color and tweaked the metal on the leg, the shirt and the boot laces, as well as added color to the inner lining of the shirt. And I threw in some purple accents to match the pinks. I really wanted to have some pink in Zane's hair too, but I couldn't get it to look right. So I didn't end up keeping it. Zane's leg is in fact a prosthetic. They lost it about five years ago, but I haven't decided how. To make up for my indecision, Zane will make up a different answer every time the topic comes up, because I think it's a funny gimmick. I didn't have to make the legs so obviously armored and so bright in comparison to the rest of the character, but I did so with purpose. Originally, my idea was for them to be able to use their leg as a method of attack that was more effective than simply kicking. It wasn't going to be some overpowered amount of damage, it was just going to function as more of a leg that could be used as a sword, but like, used by a leg instead of an arm. I had this whole mechanism where the heel was on a spring that could lock into place when pushed on hard enough, and when it moved upwards it dragged the three pieces that make up the foot upwards along an internal track, turning it into a flattened sword-like shape where the foot was. They'd then be able to stab and slash, just like any other sword could do, but they could do it while they were in kicking motions. I also took into account how, in all reality, Zane probably wouldn't be able to walk on the leg when it was locked into this form without damaging the structure. So I gave them the cane to act as an additional leg or, you know, leaning support when the need arises. In theory, this would also allow them to do like really cool sequences of flying roundhouses and increase mobility, but unfortunately, none of these features were implemented into their gameplay. So now I just have a really cool leg with some bladed edges that do nothing but look cool. Other than that though, I haven't really played Zane much, mostly because they don't even join their party until this Thursday, which is two days from now. 
so I'm sure that I'll have more information about them and their adventures and relationships and just how things work when I draw them more in the future, which I definitely am going to do. So for now, that will wrap up this particular video. Thank you for your time and for your attention. If there's anything that you would like to see me draw or talk about or a character that you want to see me draw again, please tell me and I will do that for you. Thank you once again for your viewing support, and I will see you next time.